Good morning, Matthew Day 10, chapters 20 and 21. And uh, today, as we begin chapter 20, it leads off the final verses of chapter 19. Remember, there's no chapter and verses in the original. And it's exactly the same time. It's the same event. And it really only makes sense if you are reading it in the the context of the previous chapter. Um, Jesus had been saying that when the... When the final day comes and everyone is, is regenerated or the, the resurrection, the general resurrection, that the, the disciples will be sitting on 12 tribes. Though they have given up everything to follow him, they will be the ones sitting on 12 thrones and they will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. It's quite a prediction that. And, uh, and then he makes this comment about if you've left anything, if you've left um wife, father, mother, sister, brother, lands, etc. for my sakes, you will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. And then comes chapter 20, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. And he now tells a, t uh, a parable to illustrate this truth that those who were the religious elite as opposed to these ragtag fishermen that were following him, would be lost and they would be first. And yet the principle may even hold true for the disciples themselves, says Jesus, that there are those of you who followed me, but there may be those that come much later who will even be preferred before you. And he's, he's teaching about this great principle of humility in the kingdom that we are to allow in our hearts God to choose those whom he wills. And sometimes they come after a life of terrible sin and seem to be used by God. And it seems unfair, it may seem, in that situation to us. So I guess these are the themes that I'm trying to create space in my heart for and just remain open to God choosing who he wants and when he wants. And that's when this parable is helpful because it's a parable about a, a landowner who chooses some men to work in his vineyard uh, in the morning. And he promises them a denarius, um, a certain amount of money. And then he goes out into the marketplace and uh, he sees... At the sixth hour and at the ninth hour, uh, at the third hour, the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he goes out each of these times and he finds more men. He says, come work in my vineyard and I'll, I'll give you whatever's fair. And uh, right at the end of the day, at the eleventh hour, so there's only like one hour left of work, he finds some people who were standing idle. And he says to them, but why haven't you been working? Why have you been standing idle? And I said, well, no one hired us. He said, come. I've got work for you. Go into my vineyard. I'll pay you what's fair. And then there's, there's two things which we've got to note about the landowner. He first pays those who came in last. So the, the last are first. They get rewarded first. And the first are last. They get their money last. And they've worked the whole day. How's that fair? They've got to hang around. And the second thing we've got to note is they all get paid the same. And the landowner says when he's questioned about this, he says, I gave you what I agreed to give you. You don't have any, even though you worked for 12 hours and they worked for one hour, I gave you what I agreed. And are you jealous when you see me be good to them? Now that's the lesson here. Okay, so... What is my conclusion on the matter? It might surprise you what I'm going to say. God might call you into the ministry very late in your life. And that's okay. I know that the parable is more about, um, I guess, people getting saved. But what struck me this morning is that God may approach you late in your life and say, why have you been standing idle? 
And you say, oh, because no one hired me. And then you put something in your hand and you'll say, now go, go into my vineyard and work. Don't discount the fact that you may be called late. And uh, be encouraged that even though you haven't had the opportunity to play a major role in church and in ministry, that even if it's in the 11th hour that God calls you to do something, that maybe to the world looks insignificant. But in that work, you can earn equal wages with those who have had the privilege of working in the vineyard all their lives. I find that quite encouraging. Okay, then the last thing I want to just mention is the profound truth of what Jesus says to the Pharisees. Having just quoted Psalm 118, the stone which the builders rejected, Jesus himself, has become the chief cornerstone. And this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. Jesus is that stone. He was rejected, and yet he is the chief cornerstone of the kingdom of God. And uh, he then says to the Jews, the kingdom is going to be taken from you. And it's going to be given to a nation who, that will bear the fruits of it. And that is exactly what happened. The Jews are no longer the stewards of the kingdom of God. The church is now that. I don't believe God is finished with the Jews, but they are no longer the kingdom. And then he says, whoever falls on this stone, speaking of himself, will be broken. But on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. You've got two choices in life. You can either fall upon the Lord Jesus and be broken. And I can tell you from personal experience, my friend, if you not only to become a Christian, okay, that, that requires repentance. That requires a profound humility. Blessed are the poor in spirit, said Jesus, for theirs is the kingdom. There is a breaking that happens when you become a Christian for the first time. Because you have to admit that you've been a sinner and you need forgiveness. There's a brokenness. But continually living the Christian life requires being broken. Because we still have sin in us and we still do things that are wrong. And we still hurt others. And we still have to... We have to be willing to apologize continually if we want to walk well before God. It requires continual humility and brokenness. And Jesus says, if you want, you've only got one of two choices in life. Either that is going to be how you live. Continual humility. A continual willingness to say sorry to God. To say sorry to others. To those whom you are hurting. To those whom you have hurt. There is a continual humility that the Christian must walk with. But it's either that. Or. This stone will fall upon you. And grind you to powder. And I believe that's talking about the, the day of judgment. If, if you refuse to walk in humility and grace. Toward others. And you live your life never admitting you're wrong, never apologizing to God and to others. Well, there is coming a day where the angels will pluck you from your grave and they will stand you before our holy God of righteous judgment and his fury will be unleashed upon you. Depart from me into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels, for I never knew you, will be the words that you will hear. You will be ground to powder. It will be as if all of your dreams, all of your pride never existed. It will be blown away as powder in the wind. And I know that's hard, but that, my friends, is a very, very powerful message and it is a very powerful principle for us to continually remember that brokenness in this life is required. 
you know, it's almost like Jacob, you know, we, we have to walk with a limp through this life. We, we, we have to. We, we've got to be apologizing continually to God and when necessary to others. There's got to be a humility. Okay, God bless you. See you tomorrow.